Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass Algebra 2. In this video we're going to go over the unit circle by identifying trig functions, finding negative degree values, going over special triangles, and using reference angles to solve problems. So what is the unit circle? The unit circle is a circle where each point is one unit away from the origin 0, 0. So if we look at our unit circle right here, we can see that each point on the diameter is one point away from the origin, which is here. So this point is one zero, here is zero, negative one, negative one zero, and zero one. So another important thing to know about, notice about unit circles is that they use degrees that go all the way around the axis. So it follows, it goes in this direction, this counterclockwise direction where we start at zero degrees, go to 90 degrees, 180, 270 and then 360. So we make a full circle in this counterclockwise. So another important thing about unit circles is you see this cosine of theta, sine of theta. So all this is doing is representing the x and y values. So all the x values are represented by cosine of theta and all the y values are represented by sine of theta. So for example, if we wanted to know the value of the cosine of 90 degrees, we could just look at the unit circle at the x-coordinate. So if we saw cosine of 90 degrees, so we know here's 90 degrees, here's our coordinate, and we want to know the x-coordinate, because we're looking for cosine, it would just be zero. So another important aspect of unit circles are quadrants within a coordinate plane. So the quadrants within any coordinate plane are always going to be the same across math. So we have the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So it again, it follows that counterclockwise um, method here. So, so why is this important? So there are different trig functions that are different in different quadrant, quadrants. So in the first quadrant, all the functions are positive. So when I say all the functions, I mean sine is positive, cosine is positive, and tan is positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive. So it's only sine is positive. The other ones are negative. So cosine is negative, tan is negative. The third quadrant, we have sine is negative, cosine is negative, and tan is positive. And for our last one, sine is negative, cosine is positive, and tan is negative. We might not see this right away, why this is important, but it is important to know to answer questions later in this video and answer questions related to the unit circle. So how am I supposed to remember this? So a little trick I learned back in school was the acronym all students take calculus. If you notice, A is for all, S is for sine, T is for tan, and C is for cosine. So this just is a nice way to remember which trig function is positive in which quadrant, which might not seem important now, but will be very important later. And just using ASTC as a part of your Unit circle is important when you answer these kinds of questions. So now let's look at our first examples. Let's see how to find values of different trig functions using the unit circle. So using that basic unit circle we started the video off with. Let's see how we get sine of 90. So our first example, let me just cover these up. So we have sine of 90. So, so we remember that cosine is our x coordinate, sine is our y coordinate. But we want to know sine. So what is sine of 90? So here's 90. And we just want to look at this coordinate point and ask ourselves what the value of that is. So the value is 0, 1. So since we want sine and it's represented by the y coordinate, we know that this is going to be equal to 1. So let's try another one. Let's look at cosine of 270. So let's go to 270 degrees. Mark our 
our spot here. So that this is the coordinate point zero, negative one. And this time we want cosine, which is represented by the x coordinate. So we know that this is gonna be equal to zero. And for our last uh, example here, tan of 180. So let's go to 180 degrees, fill in this coordinate point, it's negative one, zero. So tan isn't represented here. Well, it actually is, and I'll explain why. So tan, remember that tan of theta is really equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. So if we wanna know tan of 180 degrees, this will really be equal to sine of 180 degrees over cosine of 180 degrees. So we have that information, so let's look at that. So this really is just zero divided by negative one, which is zero. So this is zero. So yeah, this is an important identity to know tan of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. It'll make answering these questions much easier. Next, we're gonna be looking at negative degree values. So negative degree values can also be found on the unit circle. You just have to know which way uh, the degrees go. So remember before we were going counterclockwise, we were going this way when it came to the degrees. It was 0, 90, 180, and 270. But now, since we're going uh, with negative degrees, they actually are gonna travel a different way. So notice this starts at zero, then comes down here negative 90 negative 180 and then negative 270 and then back at negative 360 over here so so notice this goes clockwise so to solve these problems on the right here we're just going to do the same exact thing that we did with the other examples before so we're just going to look at the coordinate points of sine and negative 90 so we're just going to go down to negative 90 here negative 90 degrees look at the sine which is the y coordinate and then see that it's equal to negative one, and that's it. And we'll do the same thing with cosine. So we were just at negative 90 degrees, and, but this time we want cosine of 90, negative 90 degrees, which is just zero, that x coordinate. For our last example, we have tan, another tan question, tan of negative 180. So remember that tan of theta, tan of negative 180 degrees is really equal to sine of negative 180 degrees over cosine of negative 180 degrees. So if we know this, we can see that this is a zero divided by negative one, we'll just, we'll just give us zero. Now we're gonna look at how to find values of trig functions with 30 degrees, 45 degrees, or 60 degrees. So to do that, all we need to know are special triangles. These are the two special triangles we have to memorize. And notice we have one that's 45, 45, 90 degrees, where the sides are equal, one, one, and then the hypotenuse is red, two. And then our second triangle, we have 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and our sides are one, rad three, and the hypotenuse is two. So to solve these kinds of questions, we're gonna need to know basic trigonometry, some SOHCAHTOA. So if you don't remember how to do that, I have a video on that, I'll put that in the link below, so you can check that out. So let's just answer some simple questions here using the, these two special triangles. So if we wanted to know the sine of 30 degrees, if we look at our SOHCAHTOA, we know that the sine of 30 degrees will have to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we go to 30 degrees and then we look at the opposite, we see that it's one over the hypotenuse, which is two. So we know that sine of 30 degrees is just equal to one half. So if we look at the next one, we have tan of 45. So let's focus on 45 degrees. And this would work for focusing on either 45 degree angle. So we have tan of 45 degrees. We know tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So look, opposite is one and adjacent is also one. So this is just gonna be one. In our last example with special triangles, we have cosine of 60 degrees. So, co so let's go to 60 degrees. And then now we're just gonna look at the adjacent over the hypotenuse, because that's what that CA stands for. So we have adjacent, which is one, over the hypotenuse, which is two. So 
that's going to be our answer. And everything I'm doing here uh, is you can also always check these values on your calculator. So if, if you wanted to do that, you would just go to mode, make sure you're in degree mode. And then you could just plug these in and we could check ourselves. So n of 30 equals one half, 10 of 45 is one, and cosine of 60 equals one half. And you could check the previous problems we did earlier too. They would also work. So now, now that we have uh, all this background about the unit circle and how to solve different trig functions. Now we can go on to reference angles. So reference angles combine our knowledge we did with the unit circles and the special triangles. So we have, for example, this cosine of 135 degrees. So 135, so we know 30, 40, 50, and we know uh, everything along the axes. But what is this 135? How are we gonna solve this? So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is graph where 135 degrees falls on our axis here. So we have we have marked our degrees and we have ASTC, remember representing where each trig function is positive. And then we have these new things right here, which represent reference angles and they will help us solve this question. So, so the first thing to do is graph where 135 degrees falls. So 135 degrees is about halfway through the second quadrant right here. So this angle is from this right here all the way to here. This all represents 135 degrees. So I don't know the answer to this off the top of my head, but maybe notice this distance to the 180 degree line. Maybe, maybe this is one of our special triangles and maybe that could help us solve it. So that's what these reference angles are for. So knowing that we can take 180 degrees minus theta, so that's what that little symbol is, just means the angle, so in this case, our theta is 135. We have 130, 180 minus 135, which will just give us 45. So what that means is that this is gonna be equal to 45 degrees, and we can actually find the value of cosine 135 based on what's left over here between this axis and the angle. So, Another thing to notice before we solve, so this will be like solving for a cosine of 45 degrees. So before we take out our special triangle to do this, notice that this is in the second quadrant where sine is positive. So only sine is positive here. So that means we're gonna have a negative answer. So now we can draw, take out our special triangle 45, 45 degrees. Remember those sides, one, one, rad two, that's, that's an easier one to remember. And now we can just find, we could draw out Sokotoa, we could write it out so we remember what exactly we're finding. So remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're just gonna look at 45 degrees and, and have, so looking at that we have adjacent, which is one. Remember this is gonna be negative because it's in that second quadrant. So negative one adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is rad two. So we could leave the answer like that, but uh, radi radicals in the denominator aren't so friendly in the math world. So we're just gonna get rid of that by rationalizing the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by rad two. So when we do that, we get negative rad two all over two, and that's our answer. And the cool thing about this is, is that we get an exact answer without doing, without using a calculator, and then we can actually check it. So if we go into our calculator and put in cosine of 135, we get this crazy messy number, negative 0.707. But if you put in a negative rad two divided by two, you'll see that we get that same crazy number and we know that we're right. So let's look at another example like this using reference angles. So this time we have sine of 210 degrees. So reference angles, so by the way, these are the, all the different rules depending on which quadrant your angle form falls in. So, so now we're gonna look at where 210 degrees falls. So 210 degrees falls about here. So all the way up to here, this is all 210 degrees. So starting from here all the way to this spot. 
it's about there. So notice our reference angle to find a special triangle for us. We're just going to take our theta, which is 210 degrees, and then subtract 180 to find the reference angle that we should be working with. So when we do that, we get 30 degrees. So this will really be like finding sine of 30 degrees. So before we just start solving, remember to, to be aware of what quadrant this is in. Because notice this is in the tan quadrant where only tan is positive. Therefore, we know that we're, really, we're gonna get a negative answer. We're really finding a negative sign of 30 degrees. So now, so now 30 degrees, and we know we're gonna need to draw a special triangle involving 30 degrees. So that's perfect for our 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. 30, 60, 90, and the sides are one, rad three, and two. And then let's just write out Sokotoa. So since we're using sine, we know we're gonna be doing opposite over the hypotenuse for 30 degrees. So let's look at 30 degrees and the opposite is one. So negative one over the hypotenuse, which is two. So that's it. So we get our answer, negative one half. And again, you can check with a calculator. This one will be nice and pretty. So the sign of, instead of that messy number, so sign of 210, negative one half. So we know that we are right. So for our last question, we have tan of 315 degrees. So let's just graph where that 315 degrees is. It's about halfway in this fourth quadrant. So it travels, so it starts here, and then it travels all the way around. And then this entire angle here is 350 to 315 degrees. So next, let's look at our reference angle here. So we wanna know, three, we wanna take 360 degrees and subtract it by theta, our given angle, 315 degrees. So when we do that, we get 45 degrees. So this is really, this problem will really, will really be like solving tan of 45 degrees. So before we start solving this, let's first look at our answer is gonna be positive or negative. So notice our angle is in this fourth quadrant here where cosine is positive only. So only cosine is positive in this fourth quadrant where our angle falls. So that means that this is, answer is gonna be negative. So we're just gonna put a little negative sign here. So now tan of 45 degrees, let's just take out our special triangle. So let's draw that out. So this is 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and one, one, red, two. So I'm gonna write out Sokotoa again. So Sokotoa. So we remember our trigonometry rule. So notice our Toa is just gonna be the opposite, which is one over the adjacent, which is one. So this is just gonna be equal to one. So remember, this is, we're neg negating our answer though because it's in that fourth quadrant, so our answer is negative one. And if you're looking for more, check out the practice questions right here. Answers are in the description below. And if this video helped you, please give it a like and subscribe. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions, link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!